The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Access Television, the City of Oshkosh, the Oshkosh Cable Television Advisory Commission, or Time Warner Cable. Hi everyone, welcome to Ion Oshkosh. Cheryl Hentz here along with Dan Rylance. And on this edition, we're very pleased to be joined uh, by Gordon Hentz, our state representative from the 54th uh, Assembly District. He's going to be here for the first half of the show talking about different things going on in the uh, legislature and so forth, and uh, some upcoming issues as well as things that have recently happened. And then in the second half of the show, we're going to be joined by a uh, candidate for the Winnebago County Board District 18, as well as a candidate candidate for the um, Oshkosh uh, Area School District Board of Education, John Daggett, will be here to talk about his candidacy for both of those races. So um, with that, thanks for being hey, here. Welcome, Gordon. It's a Gordon. snowy Great kind thing. of it, night, so we're is. glad you came <laughs> thanks out. Thanks for having me on. Um, a lot of different things, kind of a hodgepodge of issues to cover. Um, I, I guess the, the first one that com comes to my mind is the statewide smoking ban. You know, we've got a, a kind of a smoking ban in certain places here in the city and restaurants and so forth and um, you know there's been a push for some time for a statewide smoking ban other states have done it uh, we're kind of still toying with this are we making any kind of progress toward that or wh where do you see this I think we are but I don't think it's going to get done in this session um, there was a bill that did get out of committee the other day that um, had a statewide smoking ban with a tavern and bar exemption till about 2010, I guess. Mm. Um, I don't think it's going to get scheduled for a vote in the Senate, and there really hasn't been much support um, by assembly leadership uh, to move this forward. Um, but I do think that uh, you know maybe uh, in the next session, in the next few years, this is something that is going to happen. Um, you know, I think Michigan's considering one now, and Illinois and Minnesota just passed mm -hmm. there. So uh, I think it's a matter of time, but you know, we got to find the right compromise. Why do you think there's there's not the the leadership for it, if you will? <coughs> well, I, I would say it's uh, we're Wisconsin, um, and and I'm, we do have more more taverns uh, than a lot of states and uh, so it's the tavern lobby I think but um, you know I mean there's also a sense of individualism a lot of people I mean I have talked to people who don't um, you know don't smoke who do feel that well it, you know it's the slippery slope of government uh, regulation but at the same time when you really look at the numbers uh, when you really look at the secondhand smoke impact it is pretty good and, and I'd prefer to try to work with um, the Tavern League on ways that we can make you know the bill better and if they need a phase in I'm, I'm okay with the phase in that's what Madison and some other communities did when they passed theirs. Okay. Campaign finance reform um, you've actually co-sponsored uh, something along these lines uh, what kind of progress has been made thus far and uh, you know what's your projection on whether something's going to uh, Again, come I to fruition? I feel like uh, you know when you're we got about you know, a couple months left that we're going to be in session, and you kind of feel the clock's ticking on some things. There's been um, a hearing scheduled, got canceled, but we're going to get it rescheduled on the impartial justice bill. This would be uh, public funding for the Supreme Court races, and of course, it'd be nice to get that that passed um, so we don't go through another election like we had last time. Um, there seems to be more support for that this year. The, the seven justices on the current court came out in support with the concept. The governors come out in support. I think people are recognizing that judges are different than legislators like me, and they can make a, uh, understand that we don't want them out there having it be a, a you know, who, to the high, justice to the highest bidder. Um, there was a hearing the other day on banning fundraising during the budget, um, a part of a budget reform package that I support. This was another bill, but. Um, you know, these, more of the incremental stuff is starting to happen, and I think more legislators and the public's understanding that you know, we do have a problem in the state. The impartial justice bill. Now, I heard you mention Supreme Court justices. Would that sort of funnel down to any judge? 
This bill, not specifically, it's just for the statewide uh, Supreme Court races. Okay. In North Carolina, I believe theirs does go down to the, at least the appellate level. Um, and who knows? I mean, I think it's where the problem is. And right now it's at the you know, state level where we've really seen considerable influence uh, from all over the place. Well, you know, if you start taking it down to um, appellate level and, and municipal That's judges right. and so forth, then do you have to um, make it applicable to sheriffs and mm -hmm. district attorney candidates and that kind of thing because they're all in the field of justice. You know? And it's, <coughs> you, know, I, you know, we'll have to see, you know, I mean, I think you really didn't see anything like we saw in Wisconsin where more than $6 million was put into uh, what's supposed to be a nonpartisan, uh, impartial uh, position. Yeah. So Follow up on that. Um, if this bill were passed, it would not affect this April's election, obviously. No, and no. I can guarantee you after this April's election, there'll be a lot more support if we don't uh, get it passed. Because it'll be they, sort of a repeat of I think we're already yeah. seeing that yeah. it, that's the way it's heading. Yeah. Okay. Any comments on Justice Ziegler's, uh, um, looks like they're just going to slap her wrist for conflict of interest? Yeah, so? I mean, there's been mixed, um, you know, if that was, you know, enough or not. I, I think since she's been on, she's actually, you know, done a pretty good job of disclosing, you know, cases uh, before the court now, mm -hmm. um, any conflicts that she's had. But This court thing, you know, we had uh, Associate Justice Butler on. Mm -hmm. and. and you know, he can't talk about anything that, you know, may come up, and he, he can't have part in his raising money. And it's like we have this third branch of government that is sort of an odd duck. Um, you know, some places have a nominating committee, and, and they, they appoint them. Would that be another alternative than to trying to... I mean, if the choice is to have $6 million spent... Um, like we had last year right. from, from, you know, small amount of people and, and right. uh, big donors or appointing, I would suggest appointing. I mean, um, that being said, right. I think it's possible to have an election system. I sure. think all of us get frustrated at the right. national level when judges, right. justices are appointed and we feel there's no accountability. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it's something to consider that would, you know, there's 22 states that elect their judges like we do. The yeah. majority of the people appoint them, yeah. the majority yeah. of states. Now, this bill, um, do you have, you know, bipartisan support for this bill? We do. Okay. Um, not, not a ton, but enough to call it bipartisan. Sure. But I think this is the area where there's the most support for this kind of consideration. Um, some people are vehemently opposed to public financing, but again, I think people can make the distinction between law, lawmakers and politicians and, and justices. I mean, it's a little awkward to see some of these people that have been career judges as yeah. yes, being thrown into these they don't very partisan-like yeah. campaigning. Yeah. I mean, I knew what I got into when I chose <laughs> to run. Um, I, I don't like to see the same people yeah. before the bench with, uh, you know, contributors coming before the court. Right. Uh, okay. The um, cable TV competition bill, or whatever it ended up being called, mm -hmm. um, was, was recently passed. Um, you voted no mm -hmm. on that. Um, why the no vote, and now that it has passed, uh, what does it mean for cable subscribers and taxpayers as a whole here in Oshkosh? Um, well, this was probably the first, you know, big bill uh, when I got in office. You know, I had visits in my first two weeks as, you know, one of the new guys um, <laughs> from groups who were going to be talking about this bill. And actually, when I was campaigning, I remember knocking on John Urban's door, and he was like, there's this bill. If you get in office, you're going to want to know about it. And I had no idea what he was talking about. But... Essentially, there was a, this is an effort to uh, repeal all the local franchises in Wisconsin by having a statewide cable franchise. Um, the cable companies are getting into phone internet. Um, the phone companies want to get into cable. Uh, and what's the best way to enable new technology? Well, um, there were going to be a lot, of, there's a lot of reasons uh, the state has telecommunication laws, has local franchises, has cable access. Um, and not all those considerations were taken, um, you know, in when this bill was developed. It was really an industry-driven bill for AT&T um, at the beginning to enable them to come into areas they wanted to without having to go into the local franchise agreement. And they lobbied very hard. Very hard. Um, but the cable companies also didn't oppose this because they were like, if AT&T is going to come here, we want to get out of our existing agreements. Mm -hmm. So this was, uh, hey, if we're going to open it up, let's open it up, but I don't want to be stuck with my local franchise agreement. Um, 
you noticed right away that it was an industry bill. Um, I have to thank you and all the other people that uh, worked with OCAT because there was a really strong effort on educating uh, people in Oshkosh about what it meant. But one of the things I learned at the state level was we're really fortunate here um, to have the kind of cable access station that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, I would bring up what it would mean to my community and the impact, and not everybody has uh, a similar um, station that does the kind of, uh, you know, the, the quality programming that we have. And so it was hard for me to, you know, explain. Some people are like, ah, you know, I don't care about, you know, that. But, I mean, here um, it plays a big role. I can tell you when I knock on doors, the council meeting's on in the background. Um, shows mm -hmm. like this are on in the background. People are watching. So um, I was very sensitive about making sure that any proposal was revenue neutral to the city. And the earliest proposal um, <coughs> was terrible. Uh, cut a lot of the main revenue that we, we got. Um, you know, would really have an impact on consumer protection and some other things. Um, the bill got better and actually the governor made some vetoes that actually made it quite a bit better. But it's hard to start with a bad bill and make it good. It would be better if everybody was on board right away and we said, what's the best way to enable new technology, to preserve, you know, local control and, and programming, to have consumer protection, and, you know, when we used to do telecommunications, it was how do we expand uh, phones and uh, cable uh, to rural communities, to poor areas, to make sure that we have infrastructure throughout the state. Um, this bill didn't include any of the requirements that we were going to provide this service, so um, there was going to be a lot of cherry picking going on. Um, you know, for the public, um, there's some concern about the refrigerator size boxes mm -hmm. that uh, may or may not appear in people's uh, front yards. Um, you know, what's going to happen is uh, they're going to, there's a new technology that allowed cable to run through the phone lines. And that's uh, what at and is going to bring. And uh, I'm on the positive side, Oshkosh is scheduled to be one of the hubs. So at and hopefully, um, you know, will be adding jobs here and will be laying the infrastructure. But uh, a better bill would have required them to lay infrastructure throughout the city instead of um, minimal build-out requirements. So. It's a little confusing, and, and that's another reason that I kind of looked around the room and realized that n that my colleagues weren't uh, didn't seem to really understand what we were doing. And well, I didn't want to blindly just say yes because a bunch of people in suits told me to do so. So um, I think my no vote is going to age well as we kind of uh, visit this issue um, again in the future and make some fixes on it. But um, it was sort of the example of how to get a bill passed and rammed through, um, how not to do a good public policy um, and hopefully you know that, that got some people's attention and we can kind of say you know because I mean I, I think there's a lot of criticism of how this bill was done. Sure. From a monetary <laughs> standpoint what does it mean because I, I know that when John Urban first came on before some of the amendments were passed um, he was talking about how because we had a contract with Time Warner Cable for so many years mm -hmm. out um, th those monies were somewhat budgeted for and in some cases I think he even said they were spent mm -hmm. yeah. and you know the changes were going to at that time anyway affect those you bet. future tax dollars so where are we at with that now? M the majority <laughs> of the money from the original bill um, was preserved Oshkosh has a 15-year cable franchise agreement that goes through, I think, 2015 or 2016. 5% um, cable franchise fee goes to the city for uh, using the right-of-way. Um, it's the 1% PEG fee uh, that's supposed to go towards cable programming that got extended for three years, but that money's gone. And I think it's like ninety dollars to $100,000 a year in revenue. Um, and when we upgraded here in Oshkosh, we did bond against that because we knew we had that money was coming in. And mm -hmm. I kind of tried to explain, my city's already spent this money that yeah. we're expecting. So um, you can technically say that taxpayers locally are going to uh, be eating that amount. So um, that was one of the reasons, again, that it was unfavorable uh, to someone who's representing a community like this. Uh, but, you know, it's much better that the 5% was kept and then we got an extra three years. It puts us closer, but sure, I think you could say it's a you know, $400,000 loss to the city. Hmm. Okay. Senator Ressler voted for it, and she was quoted in the paper as saying because it was for competition. In, in fairness to the other side, what, it, what was the argument or what is the argument for competition. Well, and um, hey, look, I'm not against competition, and I'm sure everybody's complained about their cable company at mm -hmm. some point or another. <laughs> um, 
But this idea that just you know deregulation is going to create uh, competition that's going to lower prices, um, you know, it hasn't happened. I mean, when the phone companies deregulated, they lowered prices shortly and prices shot up. Uh, we get may get more consumer choice on programming, but um, I wouldn't expect uh, lower rates, and I wouldn't necessarily expect competition anytime soon. I mean, this is going to be years before this is up and rolling, and it would have been nice to see at least the franchise agreement maintain until we actually see lower prices or competition. Uh, they did a pretty good selling job on this. So nothing's going to happen in the short term? Uh, not, not in the immediate term. Okay. I mean, I think, uh, again, that we're, we stand to benefit from this being an Oshkosh hub for AT&T, okay. okay. but uh, I think it's, it's not going to happen immediately. Okay. That was um, a good, that's the best explanation I've had on the bill. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Although it's still confusing. It is, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I'm not saying, I, I've done my best, but I'm not, I don't, you know, sure. I don't, I'm not an expert in telecommunications sure. law, and I can tell you the 80, 98 of my colleagues are <laughs> not either. How, how much AT&T lobby pressure was put on you to vote for this bill? Um, quite a bit. Uh -huh. I mean, there's the anatomy of how to get a bill passed, because, mm -hmm. um, again, AT&T is represented by uh, union labor, mm -hmm. and so labor was behind the bill and uh, business was behind the bill, and they kind of did their homework on how to appeal to a lot of different people. And again, I, I want competition, I want good paying jobs in Oshkosh, but um, you got to look at the big picture. Sure. So far, Gordon, um, there have been five state lawmakers I in the assembly who have said they're not going to seek re-election. And the, the most recent one that probably affects people in this area uh, more than anywhere else is uh, Carol Owens you know, long-time state assemblywoman. Um, she's not seeking re-election, she announced this week as we tape this show. How, I mean, do you have any thoughts on her not seeking re-election? And uh, it, then in the bigger picture, you know, how do you see this, um, all five and maybe more, how, how do you see them not seeking re-election as maybe changing the, the landscape of the state legislature, which is right now narrowly controlled by the Republicans? Sure. Well, first on, on uh, my colleague, Representative Owens, you know, I think part of her would stay in. Um, she really enjoys the work. Um, I think it was more of a family health concern that she was going to uh, retire for. So um, that may not have been because uh, she was necessarily burned out. Um, you know, it's always tough. I don't know what the turnover cycles are like, and it's going to be a presidential year, so you know voter turnout's going to be up, and a lot of areas are going to be competitive. And sure, I mean, we're three seats down, and, and there's an emphasis on trying to make sure that we pick up those seats, mm -hmm. and, and maybe some people aren't up for that kind of campaign. Um, others, you know, it really depends. I mean, it's a sort of intergenerational mix of people in the legislature, and that makes it um, kind of neat because you have a lot of people that have uh, you know, work life experience, maybe retired from another career. At the same time, you have a lot of people that are young and energetic and kind of bring that perspective. But, you know, I don't know. I think you're seeing some of it's probably natural turnover. Mm -hmm. Some people just maybe, uh, you know, want to get out because um, maybe it's going to be a tough, uh, tough fall if, you know, national trends prevail. Mm -hmm. Along kind of those same lines, uh, Jess King, who's currently on our city council, has, has now officially announced that she's going to seek the, the seat currently held by State Senator Carol Ressler. Um, I don't think that Ressler has said yet for sure whether or not she's going to run again, but um, you know, in the event that she does, uh, what do you see happening in that race? I Make mean, that's, uh, you know, that, that would be a tough race. I mean, uh, uh, Senator Ressler and I have worked well together. <coughs> um, and Jess and I are good friends, and uh, you know she's she's a Democrat, and um, yeah, I think we're seeing some changes in this area. I mean, it mm -hmm. hasn't been a competitive seat for a long time, but that being said, we've seen good candidates win in in tough districts, and um, I think Jess is a real competent um, you know candidate. So she's a hard worker. She's a hard worker. Um, she's got a broad base of support, and I think she brings a lot of ideas to the table. So I think in a year like this, uh, it's going to be a hard-fought race uh, from Wapan to Oshkosh. So. Okay speculation on that. I haven't seen a press release from you yet as to who you're endorsing for the Democratic presidential primary in uh, Wisconsin on February 19th. Do you have a favorite? I have. I actually, do. I did endorse oh, uh, Senator Obama you back did. in September. Okay. So. Okay. I apologize for that. Yeah. But I, you know, there's plenty of good candidates yeah, uh, yeah. in the race. I want to run through just some logistics just for our viewers. Um, I want you to kind of describe, if you can, a legislative day and, and what, what you do down there. And, and I'll 
<laughs> I try to keep it brief. You know, I've, I've kind of been on the circuit this year, kind of reporting back what it's like to be a okay. new person in the legislature. Um, and, and I can tell you that there's no normal day. Okay. Uh, right. Every day is kind of different. There's okay. days when. What committees do you serve on? On uh, urban and local affairs, okay. colleges and universities, aging and long term care, and judiciary and the ethics. Okay. So How often do your committees meet, and, and when is the floor time usually, if there is a typical day? Some, some more than others. I usually try to tell people, because sometimes they'll be like, oh, how is Madison? I'm like, oh. you know, I live here. But it's Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. We're usually in Madison. Um, okay. Session days are usually Tuesdays, Thursdays. Uh, committees days are uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or Thursdays. But okay. some committees, like Urban and Local Affairs, meet very frequently. Okay. Um, a lot of important bills that don't get all the headlines. But I just I was on the phone yesterday with the committee chair, and I thought we've actually been pretty productive. Um, aging and long-term care, I think we're meeting next week for the first time in five months. Okay. Um, colleges and universities haven't, haven't met in a while. So a lot of it depends on you know, what bills are there that are going to get consideration. A lot of times on committees, there's uh, hearings going on, not on a specific bill, but um, you know it's a real balance about uh, how you, you know how you spend your time because um, you know you, you need to be here to be communicating with people and in touch with things, but you need to be down there to talk to your colleagues and kind of you know get support for for ideas and policies and you know so it's size of committees, how many people are on them? Um, usually, um, you know, every two years, the majority party picks what committees they're going to have. That can change, and what the makeup of the committee is going to be. I think it's five four in some cases, um, six four in others. Um, so, you know, my committees are usually in about that size. Okay. So, um, caucus time. How much time do you spend in caucus? That depends on the day. Okay. And just for everybody <laughs> to understand, you know, we usually go onto the floor. Um, we take tackle the bills that there's real no conflict okay. on, and then. They call for a partisan caucus, and you sit in a room with, in my case, 47 uh, Democrats. And you know, I mean, with the committee system, you get briefed on, sure. you know, what bills that the people that were on those committees hear. But there's a lot of debate about uh, should we support this bill, and not we don't, don't always agree what the strategy should be on the floor, who's going to speak, what the proper way to you know fight this is going to be if you don't want it rammed down your throats, and um, you know, we've had some that have gone till, you know, 10 hours long, 11 hours mm -hmm. long. You eat in there. Yes. Okay. What's know. the pressure? I mean, you know, people always ask, you know, do they make you vote one <laughs> way? And, and uh, you know, the answer is no. Kay. I mean, we've had a lot of bills. I always tell people some of the regional differences, town, city, Milwaukee, Madison, uh, mm -hmm. those differences come out a lot more sometimes than, uh, than the Republican sure. Democrat sure. in there's different brands of all of us. Are you, do you have to be less responsible to your caucus because you're in the minority? I mean, do you, are you have more freedom to roam a little bit? Or not? I mean, I mean, a lot of times we make a pitch that you know this will look really good if we can stand strong in opposition okay. to this. Um, but I've never had someone say you know you have to do this. Um, you know, during the budget when there were kind of incremental proposals, you know, we said you know it would be good for us to support this. You know, good for not. Um, you know, if you're from a district where you know it's 80 percent Republican or 80 percent Democrat, you can pretty much do what you want. Sure. Um, yeah, if this is a pretty 50-50 yeah, area, you got to take your you know yep. constituents' uh, views into into play, and you know you don't have that luxury all the time. But um, you know, there's times you want to hang tight. I think on the other side, they've had to keep some coalitions yeah. together, and they might you know, maybe it is on the ma majority yeah. side. You need a little more Tom yeah. Delay yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> elbow pressure. Do you have staff? I do. I, uh, I need about 30. I have one. <laughs> okay. um, who, who pays them? The uh, state does, okay. and the state also sets their, their pay. So I really okay. have, you know, I choose the person and uh -huh. interviewed several people. Um, and this person l stays in Madison? They're in Madison, okay. so someone's always there. Okay. Uh, so sometimes they have to track me down if someone's trying to get a hold of me through Madison. But, um, yeah, just one person. So it's sort of uh, secretary, chief of staff, press sure. secretary. Uh -huh. Uh, Does everyone the, just have one person? No, one, unfortunately. Um, depends on where you're. Depends yeah. on where you He's are. As a, as a, I have, I have the smallest <laughs> office in the entire okay. assembly. I drew the lowest number. So, okay. um, if you're in leadership, you'll have more staff. I think if the uh, longer you've been in, you'll get an additional staff. Mm -hmm. So um, it's hard to set up an office as a new member. Um, you know, want to make sure you have a system in place to respond to casework and uh, you know letters and when people contact you and be working on uh, policy. What's your constituent constituent uh, business per week or per day? 
Uh, it depends on the issue, yeah. you know. I mean, smoking ban usually draws out a lot of people pro, a lot of against. Um, that's an e issue that people understand and seem to have feelings on. Um, if it's a specific industry bill and their members say, you know, contact your uh, representative, uh, sometimes that'll ratchet up some, some form responses. But, um, you know, we get a lot of thoughtful uh, consideration, handwritten letters from people that just uh, weigh in, um, you know, with concerns. So, I mean, democracy is a, alive uh, and well, but it ebbs and flows a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I just, you know, kind of along the lines of meeting with constituents and so forth, I, I just think that, you know, for someone especially who only has one staff person, I think you've done an incredibly outstanding job as far as um, communicating with people in the district. Um, you've held, you know, I, I get frequent press releases from your office. Um, you've held a number of listening sessions, town hall meetings, whatever you want to call them, um, usually over at the senior center. Um, you know, I, I just think you're doing a real good job that way. How difficult is that to, to balance that along with everything else? Uh, Time-wise, it can be difficult, and I appreciate it. And we, we really tried uh, to that. Because I can tell you, you, you know who is represented in Madison. Um, mm -hmm. I, we've talked about it with mm -hmm. some of these bills, mm -hmm. um, that it's really important that the public uh, does stay engaged. And I recognize that people are busy with work and family, and so you have to try to do your best to, to take it to them um, and ask them and give them opportunities. And I mean, we still haven't totally you know, perfected everything, but I've tried to as much as possible, um, you know, be available. And people are like, how can you stand it when someone, you know, harasses you at the grocery store? But actually, I'm, I'm actually, it's good. You know, I'd rather have people approach me um, and ask a question and engage than, than not. And uh, this is the state assembly. I'm not representing, a, you know, you can still have uh, it's, you know, I just have Oshkosh, um, you know, the community issues are out there. So a lot of people talk to me about city things or, or the school district's problems. But um, I'll admit, I think in the first few months I burned out a little mm -hmm. bit because I was, I was really trying to operate on all and I realized I had to step back a little bit because yeah. I, I couldn't do it. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're trying to be smarter. Um, we're trying <laughs> to, you know, plan the week better about when I'm going to be here and when I'm going to be there. And, uh, we have done, that's the third Friday at the Senior Center from 9 to 12. It's certainly not just for seniors, it's just a public location and some people come just to listen and talk, other people have specific questions mm -hmm. um, or cases and, and we've gotten a pretty good uh, response there. I'd like to try to find a time on weekends and non-work hours, but people should know they can call me anytime at home and I do my best mm -hmm. to uh, get back as soon as possible. Okay. There's, there's one thing, and we're almost out of time here, Gordon. There's, there's one thing I wanted to bring up. Um, there is, you know, we've been seeing a lot more crime being committed by younger kids uh, under the age of 18. And there's a, a proposal right now, and I don't recall offhand who's making the proposal, but it's a proposal that would <coughs> require that all 17-year-olds be prosecuted as juveniles, whereas what we've seen in the past is some prosecuted as adults. And I if I read the information correctly, um, that prosecution would be paid for by some kind of a fee or a, a tax or whatever on video games? Yeah, and actually I got asked um, earlier in the day about it. The mm -hmm. proposal is to, I mean, there's been real problems. I understand that there is some, uh, for the severely violent crime by 17 year olds, there was a push originally to get them into adult court, but there's really been uh, negative unintended consequences mm -hmm. of putting 17 year olds into the adult system um, and especially when you know people at 17 and under traditionally have rehabilitative services and that's one of the reasons to get them back in uh, juvenile court The problem is this raises the county's cost so instead of just passing another law which we do all the time and not having a revenue source they arbitrarily kind of picked mm -hmm. uh, video games um, I think that's probably not going to get supported oh. but um, they should, you know, I think Senator Erpenbach is the one who said, uh, I'm open to other ideas, but the counties weren't going to back the bill unless they got some funding because they're the ones who do the uh, juvenile re uh, rehabilitation and treatment services. So I think the important thing is that they do it, bring the money in. I, video game is another well, debate yeah. to have. I mean, at least somebody's trying to think outside of the box mm -hmm. and get something done in the way of getting rid of another unfunded mandate. I had a couple gamers you know. contact me who weren't real happy. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, but would there be any exceptions for 17-year-olds? I mean, is there I any case I think for murder and some other okay. ones, um, and I'll have to look at it again, but yeah, the severe crimes were still going to be, but you know, what we've seen is sort of, you know, 17 year olds pushed into adult court um, and, and the outcomes haven't been good. Okay, all right. 
Well, we're out of time. We have to split this show in half. <laughs> uh, it's it's election time again. As it you is. Well know. Hey, everybody, get you, out though. and vote this spring <laughs> before you know it. But um, I'd like to have you back on when we've got a little bit you more bet. time. I and appreciate yeah. it. We'll do that probably closer towards summer, mm -hmm. late Great. spring, something yeah. like Keep that. Keep up the so good work. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we will be joined by John Daggett, who is seeking a position on the Oshkosh School Board as well as on the Winnebago County Board. We'll be right back. See ya. Hey, Thanks. thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Escape. By foot. Run across boarded. I couldn't practice my religion. I was put to work in the forced labor camps. If I stay in Kabul, I would have been dead by now. If you think differently, then you're an enemy. If you know how to read and write, you're dead. You speak your mind, you're dead. The only way to express what I wanted to do was to get out. I got to the country when I was about 14 years old. I was 20. I was 24. I came here with nothing. No money, no English. America stood for freedom, it stands for freedom, and that's why all my generation, young generation, wanted to be there. For the first time, I felt like I have a right to be on this earth. Here, you can do whatever you want to do. I love my life here. I feel at home. I'm free to do what I want. Freedom to me means my life. <laughs> How you doing? Hi. Hi. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks. If only child abuse were this easy to recognize. If you even suspect abuse, call 1-800-4-A-CHILD. All calls are anonymous and confidential. Trust your instincts. Poor nutrition today will increase Sarah's chances of anemia, add to her health care costs, sick days, even stunt her ability to learn. And the thing is, Sarah's not even born yet. Get proper nutrition before it's too late. Call or visit WIC. WIC provides nutrition information, health care referrals, even food. Your child has you, and you have WIC. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the second half of Ion Oshkosh. Uh, and now we're joined by John Daggett. He's running for a position on the school board, as well as uh, he's running against Bill Wingren for Winnebago County Board Supervisory District 18. Um, John, thanks for being here tonight, and we Thank appreciate you. it. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for these positions? Well, I enjoy politics, and I enjoy the cold weather in Wisconsin, and I'm here because... Uh, um, for the last five years, I've been involved in filing uh, briefs, uh, acting as a lawyer, and uh, now I applied for a position as a volunteer for the, it's called the Mediator for Conflict Resolutions. I like being involved in politics, and I'm, uh, I'm probably, if I uh, had a professional position uh, every day, I'd be uh, very uh, fluent in discussing political things and things that would be good for the Oshkosh School Board. Um, I've had a um, number of years, worked as an administrator in Germany. Uh, I taught biology, University of Freiburg, University of Würzburg, University of Erlangen. I, a number of years ago, before I went to Germany, I uh, was a graduate student at uh, Superior uh, um, in the master's program to be a principal. So I do know what being a uh, uh, teaching is all about and um, I think that uh, uh, I would be uh, an asset to the school board because I have some experience and uh, I enjoy uh, the activity that the school board must uh, provide. You know, you, the, the school board is really essential because it's, uh, you uh, do what the constituents want you to do. Uh, you. Uh, uh, provide a good education. Uh, uh, the school board is, is actually more important than the, super, the superintendent. The superintendent only enforces uh, what the school board passes and so uh, it's uh, necessary that the school board, uh, the six members uh, are somewhat uh, educated on issues that they're, they should be uh, uh, at least uh, have a good education and uh, I, I was noticing today that uh, 
uh, most uh, school board people uh, uh, have professional positions and they make money and, and uh, 50,000 was one more some place in, uh, in Wisconsin now, uh, the average. And unfortunately, I don't have a professional position that pays it, but uh, uh, I think that I would be, a, a, because of my experience, uh, I think that I would add something to the school board. Okay, John, okay, let me now, oh, as far as the county board, why are you running for that? County board? Well, because I live in the 18th district and uh, I noticed that uh, 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 the people are kind of complaining that uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, well, people think that uh, the people in the county board are, are a little inadequate and because I'm, I feel that I'm not inadequate and I might be able to uh, add a little uh, spirit to the county board. Do you like the current size of the county board? Because, you know, it's been <clears throat> reduced down from 38 to 36. Well, you know, uh, I think that uh, uh, some people would actually like it uh, perhaps uh, cut in half, 18. But uh, as I heard these other people, you know, it was quite boring here sitting here listening to the other uh, people, uh, three people that r were before me. Uh, uh, they, they talked about there's 26 uh, um, different committees. groups mm -hmm. and uh, committees. committees and uh, they, they thought it would be stressful if they cut the people down they'd have done too many uh, committees and, uh, and uh, not all candidates said that well but there was a number Dan and uh, I listened to that very carefully since I don't I have no knowledge about the uh, what happens on on the county board and even though I run for the county executive four times and if if I would have if the Oshkosh paper really would have had a little liking to me maybe perhaps the people would have voted for me you know the paper really swings the vote in Oshkosh because you know the people what, what else do they have to believe in in just the paper if that's all they have if they don't have anything uh, about the, the candidate uh, they really have the paper comes through uh, really big you know I mean uh, and usually it's something not positive so my position is that I must convince the constituents that I'm a positive person, that I have something positive to give to the people of Oshkosh, and most of all, that I would protect the property taxpayer because uh, right now the, the taxpayers are really getting a bad deal. Well, let's get into the school board because yeah. that's really, I sense, the race of the two you're most interested in. Is well, that fair? Uh, yes, I mean, that's, that's fair to say. Okay. Al although that's not fair to say because the school board, the reality is that I'm more electable uh, running as a supervisor because that will be, that means that, that there's the election and my name will be on the ballot on the 1st of April. That's true. And it's a, it's a questionable whether my name will be on the primary, whether I even win the primary because there's three other candidates. And if there was a little democracy in this community in which I'm, I feel sad that there's so much yeah. discrimination, it's really, it's horrible. I mean, I, how can I be motivated if the paper is slanted towards something that's uh, not really democratic. You know, uh, they're, they're much, it's sad there's some no checks and balance in this system that nobody, you know, there's only one paper and the paper, if they, say, if they don't like the person, they, they can write something. Uh, okay, but you're on television tonight. And, yes, and so we, we should talk about but the question, why you're running. How many people have the chance to watch this cable TV? That's, that's really the... Well, there's I, a lot of them. Th th this is a very highly watched show. Are you so. sure? Yeah. Well, that's 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 yeah. positive. So, why are you so running for school board, and what distinguishes you from the other candidates? Well, Let's get down to specifics. First of all, if you really want to know, I want to challenge the district to think more creative on how to measure the the school success. You know, it seems like everybody thinks about basketball teams. You know, last year they uh, had uh, this uh, Steve Randall that was the coach, and they took first in the, in, in the basketball. You realize that this coach. Uh, was not even certified um, as far as having credentials to teach something other than than basketball. How can the system have be so that they had this person teaching without teaching credentials? I mean, what was the school board doing in not um, looking at at? Do you know what they gave him a temporary teaching certificate for? 
No, what was it? Special education. Oh my goodness, Dan! But he he was teaching something other than than basketball, and uh, and and he did not have a, a certification. So now now we're talking about why do I want to? Because I have experience. I want to bring fresh perspective to the school board to help establish a, a greater board independency. You know what that means? The school board is the the people that the constituents of Oshkosh uh, actually. The school board represents the constituents, and the school board enforces the policies. And what the superintendent does, he he's a voice for the for the education. And I'm qu I'm questioning if these six candidates Se seven six candidates okay on the school board actually have the ability to carry out and implement the policies themselves without having the superintendent inject his thoughts and that's not the, the reason for the school board the school board is that they have to independently decide for the policies and the superintendent then himself then carries them out right they're so the they're, policy board yes and there's so there's something very very upsetting about the present school board okay. i don't know if it's because they're not educated and that's a big question i don't know i know there's one lady it's a dance teacher did she have does she have a, have any qualifications i mean uh any experiences any uh, does she maybe does she have any uh, degrees in, in finance? Does she know what a budget means? Do you realize how much the budget is this year? It's a hundred and eleven million. It was a hundred and six millions last year. Thirty two million are k paid from the taxpayer, and this taxpayer that money is only used for repairing the buildings. Uh, I, I heard one of these school board members. Uh, in fact, it was kind of a joke. He said there's 40 miles of roofing to be replaced. Uh, I mean, a, a logical person knows that he was only saying that because he had, he, perhaps he was upset. When I, I actually heard him say that last time. Okay, okay now the two incumbents this year are uh, Mr. McDermott and Mr. Schneider. Yes. Are, what, what's your impressions of them on the school board? Are you running against either of these uh, two? You, you know, I, uh, I like Dan Schneider. I, ben Schneider. Dan Schneider. I like. Uh -huh. I mean, and excuse me, excuse me, Dan Becker. Okay, he's not up. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, so, and you know, uh, Mr. Schneider does, has a degree from Oshkosh, it's irrelevant where he has a degree. He's supposed to be a financial consultant or something like that. I, he's a level-headed person and he always questions whether they yeah. should stick their neck out and uh, buy things that they don't have money for. You know, first of all, if you want to buy something, you should be, have the knowledge, if you, you know, the, the thing about this nation is that people get these plastic credit cards and so you can spend money and spend money on credit cards because uh, there, there's nothing stopping you from, from, from spending it. You know, this nation is, is in very, very bad condition, okay. in, in horrible condition, and it's because the housing industry is ready to collapse. Uh, but this isn't germane now specifically to no, the school no, board. No, no, but we're talking about the school board. First of all, the school board, as far as having $60 million for a referendum in which is going to flat, fall flat on their face, and McDermott is all for this because evidently McDermott doesn't know what it means to, to, uh, have, fin fin to have restraint on, on, on budgets. You know, uh, Perhaps he's, he's lived a lucrative life and, and doesn't know what it means to be poor. And, and, and it, I feel sorry. I like, would like that this, this, the school board, the kids would get educated, but first of all, I don't want it to be a burden on the taxpayer. And I know that, that there's one big mistake. The superintendent is responsible in contacting Madison, having a good rapport with, with the governor. You, you realize that this $80 million comes from federal and it comes from Madison. And they could actually get more money. Some of the $60 million that they want to build new schools with, I don't know what, which schools they're going to build. $60 million is, is not even gone to the board no, yet. No, and this it's not official. No. It's just but from it the could architectural be. firm. Yeah. But if it's, it, 43 is the, 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 the one in projected one, and they said it could, could be 60. But the fact is that, that some of this $43 million that they need actually could come through share um, revenue. They could increase it from, from if, if the superintendent gets his act together, he can get money allocated 
so that they don't have to have a referendum. I mean, it's his responsibility. And then I was also thinking, you know, we have Oshkosh truck here. Is anybody aware that the CEO makes $20 million? Couldn't he just say, we'll just spend a couple of these mi million dollars for all these trucks for the school board? Wouldn't that be great? That'd be nice. Yeah. I, yeah. I, don't I mean, just think of that. Yeah. I mean, but, but has anybody ever went to Oshkosh truck? Or some of the in, uh, the places that and and ask them. Well, you know, our our kids should be the first in the nation, first in Wisconsin. Can you help us out a little so they get educated? Can you help us out? I mean, you know, I really like to associate with people. It's, it's sad that I don't have a professional position every day. I would I would be able to spit all these words out and be very eloquent if I did this every day. But you know, I haven't done this for a while, and so it, I, I'm a little rusty around the edges, but I sure like politics in the respect that I could be a good fundraiser, and I could do a lot for the school board because I do have the ability, I do have some education in which I'm very thankful for. And now getting back to the question, I think that every child in this city should be educated regardless of where he lives, and, and he should have an explanatory education. You know, there, I, I read uh, that isn't that happening in Oshkosh? No, I believe I, and there's, there's too much of a difference. There's, there's a difference between Jefferson School. Uh, there's a difference between uh, Oak, Lo, Oakwood. No, no, it's, it, 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 this, the schools are not balanced out. And, okay. and, and when you think about Perry Tipler, you, you realize that Perry Tipler has this other school in it. I think it's from Lakewood or well, Sunset. I think. Sunset, Sunset yeah. the school yeah. that was closed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that a, I mean, come on, that was a no brainer. I mean, a no, no, no brainer. Uh, and you know, you can't blame it on the superintendent. You have to blame it on these the people that made the decision. Who are they? These are the six school board members. Seven. 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 Yeah. They, they really fell on their face. You know what that's called? Egg in their face. John, what do you see as the major issue or issues in the school board race? Because mm -hmm. what we've been hearing so much about, of course, as you've been talking about somewhat, is the boundary and facilities issue. Do you see that also as the major issue in this race, or do you see it as something else? Well, you know, it's, that's a very interesting uh, question. Uh, boundaries was always a problem. They should really change the boundary, but where should they change it? Should it be Wisconsin Avenue, or where should it be changed? And, you know, some woman told me yesterday that, uh, very eloquently, that North High School has not the brilliant and the rich people, but West go there. And West is very, West get, gets all the cream, you know? They get, they get everything at West, see? So why do those rich people at West want to give some of their, their pupils uh, and change the boundaries so that North can grow a little? You know, once I made a, uh, I thought that perhaps West should be a, a bigger high school or something, but that's not, uh, that would never win any, any over Oshkosh people. Some lady also told me that they should have uh, uh, ninth to 10th schools and then a school for, for 11th to 12th. That, that's gone. And that's probably gone too, yeah. I'd say. Uh, you know, but I think, really, somebody should have a, you know, enough of this, enough, enough is enough of spending f four million bucks on these consultings. Did you realize that it went that far? I don't have that figure, but uh, yeah. uh, it, I I have the figures right here. It's so interesting. I got I got all the all the all the the, the money how they they spent it here. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, it doesn't take a, a Einstein to to use a computer and get the facts. Okay, and one place they even paid them twice. I mean, in the end effect is whose responsibility is this? This is the superintendent to oversee this. Okay. What has he been doing? I'm not, I don't know. Uh, what about the K348 curriculum change? W w any response uh, to that? I, I, I saw that uh, recently that uh, some lady was for it. She thought it would be nicer that, that to keep the kids at, uh, at a lower grade for a lower time so they feel better, so they don't have to rush them off. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? I think it's a, also a no-brainer. So you want to keep it the way it is? Absolutely. Okay. It's the best. It's the solution that. It's the traditional solution, isn't it? Okay. I mean, you know what tradition is? Tradition. If you change something, I mean, yes, you have to change sometimes. But How about closing some of the elementary schools that are not in good shape? Well, I, I think that this school board has to tackle new ideas and this messy situation like it is proposed right now with this 10-year facility plan will never fly and it won't fly because 
they're not going to get this referendum that's going to pass. The second thing is that where's the land available that I, I heard they, they want to build it out on 110. Is that true? I don't know. Uh, do you know where they're going to? No. no? Well, I, I heard this proposal. I just want to know what you think about closing some of the elementary schools. Uh, not at the present time. Not until okay. the school board can get its act together and have okay. enough people on the school board okay. that is for it. Okay. Uh, I mean, it, it, you know, progress is progress. Uh, 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 Mr. Hintz just mentioned, he said there's some school that has mold in it. And, you know, there were classrooms that are a little small or something. I mean, first of all, the, the, the classroom is good. But you know what's more important? to have teachers that are knowledgeable, teachers that love teaching, the teaching profession, mm -hmm. that they can, that these people after they leave the school, they'll say, boy, I just had a great education from the Oshkosh School District. It was something that, it's the most indelible thing that you can have forever, you know, you never, it, it's there, you know? Mm -hmm. What's in between Daggett's ears, you can't take away, nobody else can take away. The paper can kind of demolish it and write things, but I'm what I am, and you're what you are, and Cheryl is what she is. And so education is the cornerstone of your life. And so why not make Oshkosh and the kids that go to school here a great education? All right. Give me three things that you would do to improve, to make it a great education in Oshkosh, well, specifically. Well, for, first of all, uh, I, I think that, you, that they should uh, uh, have... Do, do they think about test scores? Okay. I think test scores is important. I think that you, ha you should, uh, first of all, have curriculums that are good for everybody, you know? Is the curriculum, do they, do they uh, are, are, there, are there students that excel? If they excel, they should have, uh, I think, I really think that chartered schools has to fall in under this plan that you just mentioned. It's gr uh, having charter schools and six charter schools is very good because it's creative. For, okay, for so it, one is a charter school. Now yes. give me number two and number three. What else would you do and improve it? Uh, I, I would make the curriculum more creative. More creative. Creative. Can it be more specific? Yes. What would you do to make it more creative? Well, it's, uh, this is a very, uh, uh, you know, make it creative as a matter of fun. So, we, you know, we can't, we have to leave this kind of open. You know, you have to, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. Well, give me a teaser. Open the door a little bit. Just, uh, well, just give me one, John. Come on. Uh, this, this guy is really pulling on my leg. What, what do you think, Cheryl? Uh, kind of rescue me, yeah? Huh? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, this guy wants, wants more than I can tell him. Okay, because... <laughs> Well, at least you got me laughing, yeah. Well, that's, well, that's all right. Yeah. This, is, this is a low-key show, John. Well, I, I don't know yeah. about it if it's a low-key. Um, I, I think that we have a, should have a check and balance system, you know. Um, hire teachers. Hire me as a substitute teacher that I could be creative. John, you know? if you elect a school board, you can't serve as a substitute teacher. Well, right now, you know, I, I paid $110, and, you know, I, I was really a little disappointed. They, they have my, my credentials, you know. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, why are they overlooking Daggett? I, I have no yeah. idea. Isn't that a question? Is it discrimination? What is it? I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, we all, we all uh, uh, have, should have a chance uh, to, uh, and I have a chance at being a candidate to say these things. Of course. And uh, so. And we're allowing you to, I mean, we, we invited you to come on the show sure. to do those the things. The last thing of the three okay. is to have a communication between the parents and the school board. Parents and the school board? Yes. Okay. I can remember when they made Wednesday um, half day off. Okay. And the, the reason that, that they approved that is because the parents were never allowed to be notified in time until they, and they passed it and it was over. Mm. I think it was a blunder. Mm. The school board, there must be better communication between the school board and the parents. That's the workshop establishment that they set up. That's right. Yeah. John, you'd mentioned test scores. Um, how do you feel about No Child Left Behind? Oh, I love it because, in okay. fact, I don't especially care for Mr. Bush, but thank Mr. Bush for making this. And, and you know, the, the sad thing about it is, is that the teachers were complaining because it, it, it put a burden on them because they had to change and give the students a little more time, see? I'm shocked, John. You want federal government to run 
the school districts in the United States? I'm not really saying that I want federal involvement. I want federal money. And, and we have it right now because we have federal sharing. The money comes from Washington no matter how you look at it. You, you can cut that pie any way you want to. No Child Left Behind is not funded. It is funded. If, if, if you have to, you have to, if you have to qualify. And these kids, when they don't pass, you don't get the money. That's the trick. Well, that's penalty on Title I, but, but they're not paying for uh, You're dead wrong. They are paying. They are paying 100% for No Child Left Behind. If you pass. Okay. They're not paying for tests? Well, somehow they are paying. Oh. And, you know, that's, that's, that's what the other thing. I will say four elements. The superintendent must have a hotline between Madison. I'm not certain if how many times he's requested more funding. You know, you don't have to worry about this. John, there's a formula for funding. They can change that formula. By calling Madison? No, no. You know, you can change it by, by, by perhaps by, by having also uh, a referendum or something. They can change it. You know, it's not, it's not in concrete. Damn near. Because the schools that are really benefiting from it have so much political clout that they're unwilling to change that. You formula. just said it. It's political clout. And Oshkosh has no political clout. There is... If you went to Milwaukee, I don't, Milwaukee has a lot of clout, and it's not because of the blacks, it's because Milwaukee is, is an area in which there's, there's just clout, you know? Hmm. Well, I've got an idea now. You're a whiz at getting signatures. I am a whiz. You are. You've told us that. Yes. And so why don't you draft a referendum to get this formula for funding changed yeah. and get signatures to get it on the ballot? I'll, I'll tell you, Cheryl. If I was respected and if somebody gave me a little credit for what I've really done in the past four years here, I'd more than like to do it. But somebody has to, somebody has to initiate this, and it can't come from me. Why? It's well, your idea. Well, it might be my idea, but you know, uh, uh, sometimes things don't fly unless you have support. And you so don't think there'd be support for changing the formula for funding schools? Uh, it might be in Milwaukee, but uh, you, we have to get political leaders involved. Did you talk to Gordon Hintz about this? I mean, he's, he's in the... Yes, it, it's interesting. I, uh, Mr. Hintz, uh, uh, you know, we don't know. We, he would, it, if, perhaps he could, uh, next time you see him, ask him a question on it, because I don't know his opinion. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Let's see here. We've covered a lot of different things here, and I'm not sure we've really touched on a lot of this stuff, but I'm going to ask you to, uh, and, and by the way, we should say that John told us at the outset he did not want to discuss county board issues, and that's why we just asked him why kind he was running. Kind of around that. Yep, we asked him why he was running, and we did not touch on the county board issues at all. Uh, it wasn't our oversight. It was a choice. Well, that's wonderful. Thank so you for being so sir. honest, Cheryl. Yeah. Um, why don't you take about 30 seconds, John, look into camera three right there, and tell folks why they should vote for you for school board and for county board. Well, you know, first of all, somebody that runs for these positions, uh, they're always taking a risk. They're taking a risk on... Uh, somebody might say, he's running again. Why don't he give up? Well, first of all, I really do like the, this community, and I, I like Oshkosh, and I like that uh, the people should obtain in their short life a good education. Uh, I could solidify this board by making it more, uh, the ideas more presentable. I could uh, add I'm supposed to push it along faster. Yes, I will. Yeah, I've got to wrap this uh, up. I, I, would help the, I would help the constituents, and they would get more for their buck. And I would surely not uh, go along and pass this uh, uh, $60 million referendum. All right, very okay. good. John, thanks for being here. We yeah. appreciate it. Thanks As always, hey. thanks, hey. Dan. Thanks, John. Yeah, thanks to the crew. Stay here. i got to give you a ride home. And <laughs> thanks to all of you didn't at you home. Like this? We'll see you next time. Until then, take <laughs> yeah. good care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on us. You, you know what, Dan? I didn't say any. <laughs>